Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to respond to events. So for example, when a user clicks on a button, how do we respond to that? Well, let's dive right into the action. So within the same code pen we've been working within, I want you to follow along with me. Let's find our main component, right? The function that is named our app. This is where we have our overall interface, right? The header, the time area, the pet list. And let's imagine that right below the header, we want to add a new area that says, this page has been liked blank number of times. And then we will have a button where you can click it to increment that, right? So it says this page has been liked one time or two times or three times. And then there will be another button that you click to decrease the number of likes. Now, before we actually modify the JSX for our overall interface here, let's go create the component and we can name it like area. So let's scroll down a bit. Maybe right above where we have the pet component function, right above that, we can just create a brand new function. Let's say function. Let's name it like area, parentheses, curly brackets. Let's drop down. Within the body of this function, let's have it return a bit of JSX. And it's safe to assume we're going to want to include multiple elements or multiple lines of code. So let's actually return a pair of parentheses and then inside those parentheses, we can drop down. Okay, let's start with an overall React fragment, right? Because you can only have one top level element in a bit of JSX. But now within this React fragment, we can have whatever content we want. So let's add maybe a heading level two and inside it say this page has been liked zero times. Okay, and then maybe right above that heading level two, let's add a button that a user can click on. So a button element and inside the button tags, we can say increase likes. And then right below that button, let's have another button. So opening and closing button tags and this button should say decrease likes. Okay, for now, this is all we need within our like area function. If you need to pause the video to type this out, that's okay. But now that we have this set up, let's go actually include the like area within our overall our app. So back up in our app, maybe just right below the our header. Let's just include like area, just like that. Now, if we check out the preview area, Cool, we see this page has been liked zero times and here we have the two buttons. Now at the moment, when you click on these buttons, nothing happens because we didn't say that anything should happen. So right now, let me show you how we can respond to these buttons getting clicked on. Let's go ahead and find our function that is named like area. Now on this button that should increase the number of likes, on the opening button tag, let's add an attribute or I should say a prop or property with the specific name of on click and notice the C is uppercase, but on click equals, and then let's include a pair of curly brackets. And then this is where we can just include the name of a function that we want to run whenever the button gets clicked on. Now we could just type out an anonymous function directly in these curly brackets, but to stay organized, why don't we do this within the body of this like area function, Right above the return line, let's add a new line, just like this, and let's create a brand new function. So function, and we can name it anything we want, but just so we're on the same page, let's name it increase like handler. Parentheses, curly brackets, drop down. Okay, and just for a quick annoying test within the body of this function, we can just say alert, thanks, for clicking me. Okay, now down in our JSX for that increase button, within the on click curly brackets, just include the name of that function, right? So increase like handler. Okay, let's go ahead and test it out. So now when I click on increase likes, perfect, we see that annoying alert message. Thanks for clicking me. Now we don't actually wanna display this annoying alert message. What we would actually want to do is increase this number or this count of likes. But before we make this button click do that, we first need to set up that number or count as a piece of data that lives in state. Let me show you what I mean. So back in our like area code, 
right, the function named like area, at the very top of the body of that function, type this in with me on a new line like this, use state parentheses, and again, that's an uppercase S for state. And within these parentheses, this is where we declare the initial value for the like counter or the like number. So let's just set that to zero. So React is going to take care of storing this value, but we want to be able to access this later on. So at the start of this line, let's say const and then square brackets. After the square brackets, equal sign. And remember, use state returns an array with two items in it. So we are destructuring the array that it returns. So in these square brackets, we're going to make up two variable names. You could choose any names, but just so we're on the same page, let's call it like count comma and set like count. So remember from our previous lesson, this first variable is how you can access the piece of state or the value. And this is a function that lets us update that same piece of state. So let's begin by using like count. Down within this bit of JSX where we say this page has been liked blank number of times, let's get rid of this hard-coded zero here and instead include curly brackets and just say like count. Okay, now here's the fun part. Within our increase like handler function, Instead of just this annoying alert message, we can use set like count to increase that number by one. Let me show you what I mean. So let's get rid of this alert line and we can just say set like count parentheses to call it. And now if we already knew the exact value we want to set it to, you could just type that value here. However, in this case, because we want to base our value off the previous value, right, we want to increment it or increase by one, what we can actually do here is include a function. So function, parentheses, curly brackets. Let's drop down. Within the parentheses for this function here, let's include a parameter. Let's call it prev, short for previous. So yes, we know that the very first time the user clicks on the increase button that the previous value of likes would be zero. But the idea here is what if the user's already clicked it a few times? In that case, we would need to know the previous value so we can add one to it. So within the body of our function, we're just going to return that previous value plus one, right? And then that new value is going to be set as the new like count within our state or app data. Okay, at this point, let's go ahead and test things out. So back in the preview area, this page has been liked zero times, but if we click increase likes, cool and you can click it as many times as you want. At this point, let's go ahead and set up the decrease likes button to subtract one from this piece of state. So let's find that decrease button in our JSX. Here it is. So on the opening button tag, let's say on click equals curly brackets, because we want to point towards the name of a JavaScript function instead of just a string of text. So you can imagine that we will have a function named decrease like handler. Okay, now we just need to go create a function with this matching name. Still within our overall like area function component, maybe right below our increase like handler function, we can just say function decrease like handler, parentheses, curly brackets, Within the body, let's just say set like count, parentheses to call that. Since we want to work with the previous value, we're actually going to supply a function within these parentheses. Why don't we use an ES6 arrow function this time? We will have exactly one parameter, so prev, short for previous, arrow symbol. Let's have a pair of curly brackets and then drop down. And let's just return the previous value minus one. Okay, let's check out the preview area. So if I click increase and go up to maybe 10 and then click decrease, cool. Only notice I'm allowed to go below zero, right? Negative numbers. So we can just bake in a bit of logic within decrease like handler to not let you go below zero. 
So instead of just returning previous minus one, we can get rid of that. And instead, let's write an if statement. So if parentheses, curly brackets. Within these parentheses for the condition, let's say only if prev is greater than zero, okay, and then in these curly brackets, only if that's true, then return previous minus one. And then after those curly brackets for the if, right, so if this is not true, if this doesn't happen, then we would just return a value of zero. So that way we don't let the user click to a negative number. So let's test this out again, bump it up, and then if I try to go down, cool. The lowest it lets me go is zero. So altogether, this lesson was an example of responding to a user event by changing state. And then React responds to the state changing by re-rendering only the tiny part of the DOM that actually needs to be updated. So at this point, we've seen how to respond to an element being clicked on. And now in our very next lesson, we're going to learn how to work with form fields that a user could click on and then begin typing into. So in the next lesson, we're going to add a form that lets you add a new pet to the page. The form will have three fields where you can type the pet's name, species, and age. And then when you submit the form, the new pet will appear in the list. Not only will this teach us how to work with forms in React, but it will also be another great way to practice working with state. It should be a lot of fun, so let's keep things rolling, and I will see you in the next lesson. To get immediate and lifetime access to the full 15-hour video course, you can find a heavily discounted coupon link in the description for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and take care.